close-up photography is not really my thing. I have done it over the years and I always seem to forget one thing. Bellows extension. The inverse square law. The more you increase the back of the camera from the lens, then the greater your compensation has to be. The more light falls off, follows the inverse square law. There is a rule of thumb that states that if your subject is less than 10 times the focal length of your lens, some people use eight times, I, I like to use 10, it's just easier to multiply by 10, then you probably have to give some bellows extension compensation. How much? Well, it depends on how far away the back is from the lens. I'm aware of three ways that you can figure that out. One is use a uh, traditional method where you have to use the the uh, formula. I believe it's bellows extension divided by the focal length and then squared. That'll give you your factor. The second way that I, I know is um, you have to convert your the focal length of your lens to inches and then treat that like it's an f-stop then measure the distance from the back of the camera to the front standard in inches and then you treat that as an f-stop and then you see the difference between uh, the distance in f-stops to the lens focal length in f-stops and that's your compensation and I find that way to be really 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 quick in the field you still need to tape measure and you still need to measure and the third way is all on about magnification so you stick a prop in the scene and then you go on the ground glass and you have a little ruler and you measure it and that tells you the compensation. I'm just curious to see what the actual distance is from the lens board to the ground glass with my uh, 180 millimeter lens. I did focus the camera on infinity. The tree is way in the back outside. So I'll insert tape measure until it touches. And holy smokes, it's 180 millimeters exactly. So I'm gonna get the camera all set up with a little composition that I wanna use. Then I'll go ahead and calculate all the bellows extension factors for each of those methods. And I mean, they should be about the same, right? I think I'm going to shoot two sheets of film, one with no bellows compensation and then one, I think I'm going to use the f-stop method. Hey everybody, I'm all set up to take a photograph of my wife's plant. She's not here, she's at work, so I'm taking advantage of this space. She finds out I'm dead. Anyways, um, I'm all set up, I've got the 8x10 with the 180 millimeter lens that I recently acquired. The focus, pun, of this little exercise is all about a bellows extension factor and a quick way to calculate this in the field. So I don't need any calculator or, or my head because I suck at math. Uh, I have this piece of paper and on this piece of paper, I have a list of f-stops and um, all my, the uh, lenses that I use that I converted in, over into inches because you need to be working in inches in order for, to do this and it's really quite simple and I'm going to show you how I do it. Okay, my subject is very 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 close as you can see it's only about 40 centimeters away so definitely I need bellows extension factor. So to do that I need to measure the distance from the film plane to the center of the lens. Now the method I'm going to show you works really well for most lenses but it won't. It's not very accurate with telephoto lenses mainly because the the what is it called the rear nodal point or the focal point is behind somewhere in space behind the lens. Most of these large format they're very symmetrical so um, we can take our measurement right at the lens board. Okay, the other thing you need to be aware of is uh, if you have any movements 
with the back or the front, you need to be very careful when you're measuring. For what I mean by that is that I have the back of the camera tilted back, so it's not parallel with the front. So I have to make sure that I'm measuring from the center of the ground glass okay, and all the way to the center of the lens plane or the lens board, just for the sake of accuracy. I mean, this method's not 100% accurate, but it's pretty darn good. And it makes things so much easier in the field. So I'm gonna take the lens off and I will insert the tape measure into the front of the camera until it touches the ground glass. Gotta make sure the tape measure is also in the middle of the front standard and I'm got, I've got about 12 inches. So on the paper you can see on the left column I have all the f-stops starting at f3.5 and going all the way down to f64 in third stop increments. And the column to the right shows most of the lenses that I use. 120 millimeters, which is 4.7 inches, 210 millimeter, which is 8.3 and so on. And the lens that I'm using today is the 180 and that's seven inches. So on the back to the column on the left, I look for the F7 and the, my bellows extension was 12 inches. So going from seven, F7 or seven inch lens, it's a third, two thirds, one stop, and a third, roughly. I mean, I could go in between 11 and 13 and add a six of a stop, stop, but no, that's okay. Now, what is one and a third stop factor? And if I go over to my other third column, it's called difference in stops. One and a third stop difference is a factor of 2.5. So I would add the factor of 2.5 to my exposure. Or I could add one and a third stops, but I'm probably going to um, add the factor to my exposure because I know I'm gonna stop down. I wanna get as much depth of field as I can. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to shoot two sheets of X-ray film. One without the bellows extension factor of one what did I say, 2.5? And the other one I'm going to apply the bellows factor. And we'll see how much of a difference there is. So my base exposure is one second at F8 and a third. And I'm gonna place that on zone three. So that's two stops less. So that's F16 and a third. And I'm gonna stop down as much as I can. So F22 and a third, F32 and a third, F45 and a third. So that's three stops less. Okay, so the total time without bellows extension is eight seconds, but I need to apply um, reciprocity. X-ray reciprocity, what did I say, eight seconds? I'm gonna make it 12 seconds. Yeah, I'll close the shutter, and I'll put the film holder into the back. Zero. Twelve seconds. Now I will do the second exposure, but with the bellows extension. So that, with the bellows extension factor of two by five, that makes it 20 seconds plus reciprocity. 40 second exposure. Zero. 
40 seconds. So next thing is I will go into my dark room and develop both these sheets. I will probably develop in D23 one to one. But before I do that, I gotta have some lunch. I'm starving. I'll see you guys in the dark room in a bit. And all you need are these two little printouts. This is called a quick disk. And just go online and Google a quick disk. It's a free download. So what you do is you place your little target in the scene and then you go on the ground glass and measure with this and you'll get your compensation. Okay, I've got the target in and I'm gonna measure on the back. You can see it right here. So we're gonna measure from here. Here. 